so today we are prepping for our, an assignment that's due next Tuesday, which is to, it's a quick thing, it's to take a couple of news items and turn them into radio news items. So any newspaper or news source you want, but it should be a real news source, either online or here. I have some guardsmen with me. It's always a great thing to use a guardsman. And so the idea is to take a couple stories and um, basically take the facts from the stories, uh, write them into your own radio news stories, and of course give attribution to the author and the original source. So um, in the course of just talking about um, how to do this, we'll come along across a number of uh, different issues which are also talked about in chapter three of the textbook, which we won't have time to look at much today, but we'll also look at it next class as well coming up. Um, so we've already talked about the lead being a very important part of the structure of a news story. And here, whether it's print, television, or radio, or the web, you know, by the lead we're talking about the first sentence or the first two sentences. Um, there are various strategies to uh, writing leads, uh, but the main thing is to try to hook your audience's attention. Uh, if you're in a short news story, most of your space, most of your time is going to be taken up communicating the essentials, right? The who, what, where, why, when, how in your short 30 second news item. Uh, so your leads in those short items are typically uh, informational, they're informative, and they're often called a summary lead, which would cover the five W's, or maybe four out of the five W's, let me put four out of the five W's in that lead sentence or a couple of sentences. So four out of the five, who, what, where, when. And then perhaps later on, depending on the nature of the story, you might get to the why or the how. So a summary lead would be your most basic type of lead for print or for radio. Uh, a second type of lead, often called the indirect lead. And uh, actually, some people write lead, L-E-A-D, some L-E-D-E. I have no preference, so either way is fine. Uh, the indirect lead would, rather than give the name of a person directly, it might say, uh, uh, you know, a reporter for the Guardsman won a big award this weekend. And then the next sentence would say, so-and-so, so-and-so, who's worked at the Guardsman for the last four years, won, you know, the Pulitzer Prize this weekend or whatever like that. Woo-hoo, that would be great. So, you know, the... the, the uh, the difference between the indirect lead and the informative lead is the indirect kind of teases, well, who is this person? And will give you know, their role in the story rather than their actual identity, pulling that back. And sometimes if it's a person that we've never really heard about, an individual who's not famous or known to the community of readers, you may open up instead with an indirect lead and give their role because that's more interesting. you know. A city, you know, if I just started with the name of an individual, you may not know him. But to know that it's a reporter from the Guardsman here at CCSF, that's uh, going to capture your audience interest even faster. Okay? When we get into writing our feature stories where you'll have more time and space to stretch out, there are other kinds of leads which are, you know, more teases. You know, you might come in with a clever and intriguing phrase rather than going right in with your basic information. But for these two types of stories I'm going to ask for you for on Tuesday, you want to get directly into the heart of the story pretty quick because they're short and they need to just, they're news items, they need to inform. Um, so this would be sort of the first thing you would need in a story would be a lead. Um, of course, there's information that can't comprehensively be fit into the lead. So that will come a little later in the body of the story. Should I write number two, body? 
There are no real directives for the body of the story, except that it should fill in the rest of the information from the lead. Uh, but endings are important. And typically, endings uh, do two things in a broadcast story. They might point to the next news coming up on that story. In, in other words, not the next item in the newscast, but the next thing we're going to learn. Yeah. City Council, or, or you know, the, um, the, the Academic Senate will meet next week to decide on that, or uh, so on. So at the end of the story, you say, well, OK, what's the next thing that's going to happen? So let's point to next, next steps, let's say. Um, or another thing you might do is uh, um, let people know why was this story important. Could be another thing that you could talk about at the, you know, in the final sentence or so. So you know, uh, the guardsman's honor makes the whole college look good, or something like that. Or uh, CCSF always pleased to hear that some of their best are being recognized throughout the country. Something like that. Again, this is basically saying, why was that story important? Why why was that of interest here? So those are a couple of things that. We typically have at the ending of a broadcast news story. Um, so now again, these are 30, 45 second stories. They're very short. And that's why you know, uh, it's just good practice to, to get in and do them. So radio news stories have a particular format, like how they're laid out on the page, and a particular style. So uh, we will. Uh, We'll address that now. <laughs> and you'll see I'm going to be asking you to write in the format that I show you, all caps, particular layout on the page, uh, and in the style of broadcasting, which is conversational, present tense, kind of up to the moment. Um, those are a couple of the biggies. There's, there's more written on the, on the materials that I got to give you. So. Um, here I should show you where that's coming from, right? So that's in our modules. We're on week three here. Uh, one, two, three. Where are we? There we go. Got a whole bunch of stuff up there. But there's the assignment due for Tuesday. And here's a tutorial which explains format and style and terminology for the types of stories that we're doing. And here are some examples of the type of thing that we're listening to. And I also recorded a couple this morning that are, because these are you know, I don't know, just getting a little old or something. So uh, why don't we kick this off by hearing what the product is so that you know exactly what I'm talking about. So this is from uh, KCBS this morning, 9 AM news. So this is one of the biggest news, you know, radio news channels. And let's see if we can hear it loud enough before we start. Uh, volume's all the way up in here. Can't go higher than that. And then on the computer, all the way up. OK, I think this is as best we can do. Eat as it is want to do at this hour. Your next update, 908 on the traffic leader, KCBS. That's the end of the traffic. Yes, temperatures a little warmer away from the Bay and the Coast, about the same near the Bay and the Coast today with a slow burn off of the overcast. Traffic and weather together on the 8th on All News 106.9 at AM 740, KCBS, a radio.com station. It's Thursday, September 6, 2018, and coming up on KCBS. This is Matt Bigler. Why a botched landing that cost the life of a pilot this week was highly unusual for the Palo Alto Airport. I'm Jennifer Hodges. The resignation of a longtime school president under claims she mishandled sex abuse allegations. And more tension at the confirmation hearing for Supreme Court nominee Brett Kavanaugh. Good morning. I'm Stan Bunker. In for Susan Lee Taylor, I'm Holly Kwan. CBS News covers the world next. What's happening and why? KCBS AM, KFRC FM, and HD1. San Francisco, Oakland, San Jose. It's 9 o'clock. This is CBS News on the Hour, sponsored by TheraWorks Relief. I'm Steve Kaif, and it's a battleground in Washington at the Senate hearing for Supreme Court nominee Brett Kavanaugh. Another day, another headache for Republicans. 
As more protesters are arrested, Democrats wage their own war, making public confidential emails from Kavanaugh, Senator Cory Booker. And I understand that, that the penalty comes with potential ousting from the Senate. Chairman Chuck Grassley. So you talk about the public right to know. Do you want to give up your emails right now? Make them public? I don't think you do. Among the documents released, one email from then White House lawyer Kavanaugh raising doubts about whether Roe versus Wade is settled law. Steve Dorsey, CBS News, Washington. Three people are dead, two injured after a shooting in the loading dock in first floor of an office complex in Cincinnati. Police Chief Elliot Isaac says the shooter is dead, too. Our officers responded very quickly. They engaged the threat and they neutralized that threat. However, there was some tragedies that did occur. And police have no motive for the attack. Defense Secretary Mattis and Secretary of State Pompeo are among the Trump administration officials who say they didn't write a bombshell New York Times op-ed. It's from a senior administration official writing anonymously, telling of internal resistance to President Trump. Mr. Trump labels it gutless. White House correspondent Major Garrett. The White House, beset by external criticism day in and day out, now also has to reconcile itself to the fact that one person at least, and this op-ed suggests there are a certain number of like-minded senior administration officials who are critical of the president and work actively to move the agenda he talks about in a different direction. Well, CBS's Stephen Portnoy says a new administration move will likely extend the detention period for some illegal immigrant families. The regulation proposed by the Homeland Security Department aims to replace the 1997 Flores Agreement. That court settlement has barred the government from keeping kids in detention, even with their parents, for more than 20 days. Secretary Kirsten Nielsen calls the Flores Agreement a pull factor for illegal immigration and a loophole that has prevented the government from keeping families together. Her move ensures that the lengthy court fight over this issue will continue. A wildfire that closed a part of Interstate 5 in Northern California tripled in size overnight. Fire officials say some folks should leave their homes. Well, our crews actively engaged in fighting the fires well aircraft will be available to us as uh as is safe to do so with the smoke layer wall street right now the dow is down 14 points nasdaq down 72 this is cbs news okay impressions about that comes at you pretty fast doesn't it yeah, it's not information in short amount of time. yeah 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 it is uh they really cram it in there so that's um that's part of the uh, radio news uh, approach, game, I guess. When you write features, you have a chance to stretch things out. But these, these are much more contained and, and short. Um, Okido. So there's two main types of stories. There's, there's other terminology, but we just try to keep it relatively compact uh, here. So I'm looking at this uh, resource. I put it up there, reader wrap feature format. So this is not from your textbook. This is uh, stuff that I uh, gathered up for you. Um, so uh, the two basic types of stories that you'll hear, and I'll ask you to write one of each, is what's called a reader and what's called a wrap. Okay. And they're pretty much, they're quite similar, except the wrap contains a sound bite in it. So the reader is a script of a news story in which no actualities are to be played. This script is read live on the air by the newscaster. So in radio news talk, a sound bite is an actuality. Okay, so, and they may shorten that to ACT, A-C-T. In a script, you'll often see A-C-T and then the name of whoever will talk. So that's called an actuality. And uh, so that is, a reporter goes out and records the actuality. As you, go, you go see uh, uh, whoever, police officer in Cincinnati, you know, what's going on, you know? And from that, you extract a little 10, 15 second clip. That's, so that's your actuality. Uh, so uh, in the reader, there is no actuality. It's just either the anchor person or the reporter who reads the story from beginning to end. So that's called a reader, simple enough to remember. And then a wrap is basically like a sandwich with the actuality in the middle of it. Uh, so the anchor or the reporter talks, they play an actuality, 
and then the anchor or the reporter finishes the story, usually. A wrap could also be kind of open-ended and you know, somebody doesn't come back to close off the story. At the speed that these stories move, sometimes you don't even notice. You, know, you hear the anchor start the story, you hear the sound bite, which you know, is called an actuality, and then you know, the, the anchor comes back and maybe he's finishing off that story, maybe he or she is starting the next story. Um, you know, you're, you're kind of decoding it as it goes along. So there's no, there's no hard and fast rule that a wrap has to have uh, the uh, anchor person come back and finish it up. But that's basically it. So like, actuality, is, yep. What does that mean, actuality? Pardon me? What does that mean, actuality? Actuality is a 10 to 20 second sound bite. Oh. Okay? So uh, if I go back to um, our examples here, Almost all these items would be considered wraps, if I could. Day in and day out, now also has to reconcile itself to the fact that one person at least, and this op-ed suggests... Okay, so this is a rather... Uh, the op-ed story, I don't know. Let's first find a reader, which I saw there was one at sort of around the end. Loophole that has prevented the government from keeping families together. A move ensures that the lengthy court fight... Over yeah, so Stephen Portnoy is doing a reader here. Calls the Flores Agreement. Okay, hang on. 97 Flores Agreement. That Sorry. Why says a new administration move will likely extend the detention period for some illegal immigrant families. The regular. Okay, so that's the anchor. That's called the anchor's toss. So in a newscast like this, you have the anchor. In this case, there are two anchors who... Um, they can either read stories themselves, or they can introduce a story and toss it to a reporter. So in this case, uh, the story is on immigration. It's Stephen Portnoy, who is a CBS radio national correspondent in Washington. So this is the kind of story that gets piped down to KCBS from the CBS network. So these things like kind of go directly onto the air. So now let's hear, so this is, you'll hear a straight read. There's no sound bite in here. For some illegal immigrant families. The regulation proposed by the Homeland Security Department aims to replace the 1997 Flores Agreement. That court settlement has barred the government from keeping kids in detention, even with their parents, for more than 20 days. Secretary Kirsten Nielsen calls the Flores Agreement a pull factor for illegal immigration and a loophole that has prevented the government from keeping families together. Her move ensures that the lengthy court fight over this issue will continue. A wildfire that closed... That was it, right? And when he said Kirsten Nielsen, I thought, we're going to hear Kirsten Nielsen talk. Yeah, but it wasn't actually, you know. So that's an interesting thing to note. Whenever you say the name of a newsmaker, the audience is pretty much primed to hear an actuality. But in that case, no actuality. It was just a reader from beginning to end. Portnoy tells us the whole story in about five sentences, uh, you know, so of, of what's going on. You know, starting with the latest news that, you know, something's being voted, uh, what does it replace? And then comment from the administration. So we're moving into the body at this point. Why it was important that this, you know, the Homeland Security and their current, the way they see things is like, well, this is a magnet for immigration, for illegal immigration. We wanted to close that off. So, and then that's it. So that's a reader where you're just writing that. And then most of the others were raps, and they started off with the one from the Kavanaugh hearings, which was kind of funny in a sad way. Um, and that contained two actualities, I think. Let's see here. The life of a pilot this week was highly unusual. We still are in the teasers there. Good morning. I'm Stan Bunker. And for Susan Lee Taylor, I'm Holly Kwan. CBS News covers the world next. What's happening and why? KCBS AM. KFRC FM and HD1, San Francisco, Oakland, San Jose. It's 9 o'clock. This is CBS News on the Hour, sponsored by TheraWorks Relief. I'm Steve Kaif, and it's a battleground in Washington at the Senate hearing for Supreme Court nominee Brett Kavanaugh. There's another day, another headache for Republicans. 
As more protesters are arrested, Democrats wage their own war, making public confidential emails from Kavanaugh, Senator Cory Booker. And I understand that, that the penalty comes with potential ousting from the Senate. Chairman Chuck Grassley. So you talk about the public right to know. Do you want to give up your emails right now? Make them public? I don't think you do. Among the documents released, one email from then White House lawyer Kavanaugh raising doubts about whether Roe versus Wade is settled law. Steve Dorsey, CBS News, Washington. Three. So there you go. That was uh, the, um, the entirety of that. So uh, uh, what did you notice about the way that those actualities are, are used or introduced? It's like they drop the person's name and then immediately the words come in. Absolutely. Are you going to say that too, Eric? Yeah. yeah. Uh, right. Exactly. So in radio, because this isn't, this isn't print, in radio typically we're going to say who the person is before we play the actuality. So in the, you know, the anchor man comes on, says, you know, Steve Dorsey reporting from Washington. He starts the story. Uh, we hear a couple of <laughs> screams of protesters in the room. Uh, and then eventually we get actuality Brooker, actuality Grassley. And so notice that when you write these, you attribute the actuality usually before we hear it. Okay, so uh, you, they say Corey Brooker and you know, Chuck Grassley or, or whatever. And they play a very short clip of them. And then Dorsey finishes off the story, you know, which wasn't all that informative. It's basically uh, you know, uh, of interest because of the current circus that's going on in the Kavanaugh uh, uh, hearings and stuff. Um, so, but, but in looking at that and listening to that, we can hear you know, how it's done, basically. So the reporter starts off the story. Uh, and then we get an actuality, and in this case, we get two actualities. And so a further rule of actuality is you've got to identify who's talking, usually before we hear them, so that the audience has an idea of who's this. Um, sometimes in a longer piece, you can start off an actuality, and then you can uh, attribute it afterwards. That's possible, too. Uh, but typically, you'll say it beforehand. As we said, it's dense. There's a lot of information. So um, it helps people just to know who they're going to hear from you know, when, when, they, when you do hear from them. Now, those, those actualities were, you know, I mean, to hear Grassley scold the people in the room, it's like, would you want Yuri? You're demanding Brett Kavanaugh's emails from 15 years ago. Would you want me to show everybody your emails now? You know, I think those are those. There's there's not really a coherent narrative that's being worked through with those. It's basically just you know here's something that Grassley said that is short, compact, and a little bit nasty. So let's let's put that in there. But very often, basically, what you're doing is you're telling a story yourself with your lead, and then you're using actualities to you know provide some emotional interest um, for, for people to hear the actual, uh, you know, uh, the, the, the actuality, the people who are really talking. Uh, and so you're kind of advancing a story using actuality. In this case, the story is pretty thin. Uh, and eventually, you come back to the reporter and finish up. So uh, uh, that would be a wrap. When started when the, when the person was screaming at the beginning. You said yeah. that was also an actuality. Well, now that's I mean, it. It wasn't. It wasn't a quote, obviously, and we didn't know who the person was, but it was something that was directly from it. Yeah. So I have, I have, uh, I have a hesitation there because it was a person talking, mm -hmm. but um, if it's just plain old sound effects, like you're, uh, you know, you're going to a factory. It's called Nat Sound. Nat sound or raw sound. And so it would be abbreviated in a script as NAT SND. So this would be, for instance, you know, uh, you know President Trump spoke, spoke at a rally uh, at an automobile manufacturing uh, uh, plant. And if the first thing you heard was or something like that, sound effects from the plant, that would typically be Nat sound. 
Um, so again, in, in features, a lot more effort goes into creating a sound bed, which is evocative and interesting. You know, there's some really beautiful radio documentaries that use a lot of that sound. Uh, so I was wondering whether the screams of those protesters would be considered, I guess they would be Nat sound, I think. Okay. Yeah, because, you know, uh, an actuality is really a sound bite. It's somebody saying something. You know, politicians are you know, skilled at giving those sound bites. Okay, so now, So, so yeah. it's more of just like, as far as that's concerned, they're just trying to um, just make, to show like how chaotic it is. I think, yeah. And co how much conflict there is. Yeah, was that your impression of the story? Because that would be that's mine. All, that's all that's there, because you can't really tell anything from what's, you know. Right, yeah. Um, from that little bit. Yeah. What else is going on? Yeah, it, right. It's not even a protester screaming, you're going to take away our right to abortion or something like that. Mm -hmm. it's, it's just like circus screaming. Yeah, yeah. So I, I think they open it up like that you know, playing on the current perception that it's, it's kind of a crazy event. Crazy you know? town. Crazy town, yes, <laughs> as they say, right? Or that's, that's supposed to be the administration itself, that's what right? Somebody says. That's what they said about that. I, I thought it was the administration itself inside. Was, but anyway, ay, ay, ay. So, um, so example, what, what does this look like on, on the page? So this is what a reader looks like. Um, this is, these, are, these are written by students, actually. Um, so are we, clear, are we clear on what readers and, and raps all are then? I think we are. So the reader is just somebody talking. The rap will have a sound bite in it, which will be labeled actuality. So moving probably too quickly on, and we can come back and listen to some more stories. But uh, this is how it looks on the page. Now, uh, different news organizations will have different layouts. Um, all caps is sort of a classic, uh, especially in radio, uh, but some news organizations use sentence case, just typically, you know, we in our course are going to be using all caps. Other format things, all of these have what are called a slug in the beginning. So all radio stories have like a three line slug with the title of the show, which is, this is not said on the air. Right? So the title, sorry, not the title of the show, the, the title of the news item, which goes into the lineup of the show, because you know this, this is the lineup of the first segment of the 9 a.m. news. They do national stories. Then they have a commercial, and they come back, and they do local stories, which they've teased as the Palo Alto Airport and stuff. So each of these will have a name, and they'll be in a list, a lineup. And then all of the actualities will be stored on a hard drive, and they'll be ready to play those actualities or you know, the reports from the reporters as they come up. So they need to have a title, the name of the reporter, and then TRT stands for total runtime. So in this case, it's a 30-second news item. Um, so all, what you write should also have three lines. You think up your title. You know, it should be about what you're talking about. Put your name, and then put total runtime. 30 seconds in the case of the re reader, and 45 seconds in the case of the rap. That's what I'm asking you to write. So, uh, and a great way of you know, evaluating your work is just to read it. So Carol has written, the Planning Commission unanimously approves construction of a 62-unit residential building in the upper market area. According to the San Francisco Examiner, the Planning Commission on Thursday unanimously approved the construction of a seven-story, 62-unit residential building on the site of a former restaurant home at 2100 Market Street. The residential building will have a bicycle but no vehicle parking spaces, and seven of the units will be below market rate. As a condition of approving the project, the commissioners asked the developer to reconsider the facade of the building. I think that's it. So. First of all, you could drop this whole headline part. I'd say really the story begins there. According to this, you know, you, well, this does work as a lead. So <clears throat> we're going to keep the lead. Who? The Planning Commission did what? Approved construction of a 62-unit residential building in the upper market area. So we've got the who and the what. Uh, we've got attribution here, which is important. Uh, so. You could have, she could have 
cut down a little bit of duplication by simply saying, on Thursday, the commission approved the construction of a seven story. So what I object to is in her lead, she's, you know, it's, there's a bit of repetition here. You don't need to have that. But basically, you're looking at who did what, when, and we know that it's in San Francisco, but more specifically, we know it's at 2100 Market Street. So, you know, in this, this should just be rewritten into, uh, with no duplication, your lead, because you've got who, what, where, and when in there. Um, also, I'm asking you for, to attribute where your facts came from. So, you know, according to the San Francisco Examiner, that does that for you, okay? So if you go and adapt a story from the guardsman, you could say, you know, uh, student's college family lays him to rest. That's a pretty sad story, you know. Uh, looking into it, Diane Fallen Gray, transgender city college student, found, okay, so you would say here, we're looking through for when the ceremony was and the details, looking through for the who, what, where, and when. <clears throat> Once you've given that, you would want to say, where did your information come from? So you'd say, you know, David Horowitz of the the Guardsman, or David Horowitz of CCSF student newspaper, The Guardsman, reports that or says that. So that's so, attribution. Uh, so the, the story we look at, how long should the story be? Because 300 words for the, for the, uh, for the extra credit, but right. for this yeah. one, how much? Well, you're looking at, uh, let's see. For 30 seconds, it's approximately five seconds for a 12 uh, point. So this is, this is also spelled out in the description. Okay. You're basically looking for, you're looking to write something that is five to eight lines long for 30 seconds, depending on how fast someone reads it. So uh, there's typically 12 words to a line. And so that would be 60 to 100 words for this thing. So and you can, you can time it out. A short one. Oh, they're all short. Yeah, they're, they're real short. This one's 30 seconds, the reader. So really what you need to do, no, no matter how long the article is, is you gotta search through it and find the information. The who, what, where, when, right? And put that into your lead. Uh, and then that's got you probably half the story. Uh, then you're filling out the body of the, the piece, which is only going to be a couple more sentences, maybe two, three more lines. So at that point, you can give more details if you want. Uh, and then that's basically it. If for, in 30 seconds, you don't have a lot of time to do much more than that. So, so the one you're showing us is about 10 lines, so she's probably a little bit too long. Yes, and this, like I said, this is kind of duplication here. So, right. so if we try to read it without that, you know, just, just to time it out, wherever. So we should time it after? You should, once you've written it, time it, read it to yourself, and don't read it too fast. Read it out loud, and read it as though, pretend to be a news person and read it out loud once you've written <laughs> see how long, if we cut off her kind of duplicate lead there. Um, let's just stop watch, okay. According to the San Francisco Examiner, the Planning Commission on Thursday unanimously approved the construction of a seven-story, 62-unit residential building on the site of the former restaurant home at 2100 Market Street. The residential building will have bicycle but no vehicle parking spaces, and seven of the units will be below market rate. As a condition of approving the project, the commissioners asked the developer to reconsider the facade of the building. So that came in at 27 seconds. So I'd say, you know, if, if we just rewrote this a little bit to, to, you know, combine the first two sentences into a single lead with no duplication, she'd be right on, about 30 seconds there. So, you know, eight lines or so. So you can time it out that way. But uh, uh, in... Um, you know, in intro to broadcast writing lore, 
if you are using 12 point with your typical 12 point font with your typical one inch margins, each line should last about five seconds. Some people read faster, some slower, so check that out. Okay, so that's how a reader would look. It has a slug, which nobody reads, and then you're right into the story, and as you write it and read it, you know, I mean, the mistake that Carol made here is she kind of has a headline up there. Uh, you want to you wanna jump in very conversationally as, as somebody talking, just telling you the story. You know? So uh, here's a wrap. This is what a wrap looks like. So Carol again, three-line slug, right? So no one's reading this on the air. Um, this one's 45 seconds. And I made it a little longer to give you room to put in a sound bite. So uh, let's time this one out while I'm reading it so I don't read it to you five times in a row, basically. <laughs> Reset. <clears throat> Three people were killed Saturday night when a car burst into flames after colliding with a taxi cab. KCSF's Carol Summers has the story. Whoops. So that's part of the anchor's toss. Let's take it from here. It happened south of Market in the area of 9th and Brandon Streets around 9.20 p.m. CHP officer Williams saw a Chevy sedan doing donuts at 5th and Bryant Streets and started pursuit. So that was 14 seconds until we got to the actuality. And notice this is, this is how you write up an actuality. Put it in square brackets, ACT, short for actuality, and then the name of whoever's talking, Officer Williams in this case. So Officer Williams says, Instead of stopping, the car started to blow through red lights on city streets. And that was it. And you write at the end of the sound bite, the actuality, you write the total runtime of the actuality was four seconds there. And you can time that out if you want. And then back to the reporter. So we go back to Carol in square brackets so we know that that doesn't get read on the air. And that's when Williams ended pursuit. The Chevy continued to flee. Two blocks away at 9th and Brannon, Williams saw it collide with a taxi cab. By the time he reached the vehicles, the Chevy was engulfed in flames. Two people were found dead inside the Chevy, and a third person was found dead outside the vehicle. The police are still investigating. This is Carol Summers for KCSF. And so that was 4771. So it times out about right. Yes? Um, so what else can we note here? Um, two things we're adding in the wrap then is I'm asking you to write what the anchor would say in order to set up your story. So the first thing you do, focus on your story, what you've got to say. What's your lead going to be? So it happened south of Market in the area of 9th and Brandon Streets around 9.20 p.m. That's a bit of a delayed lead. You know, we don't what happened? What exactly happened? CHP Officer Williams saw a Chevy sedan doing donuts at 5th and Bryant Streets and started pursuit. So Carol's making an effort here to tell us a story in a story-like way, you know? So something happened. What happened? Well, someone doing donuts. And the officer gets, you know, starts to pursue. And as the story goes on, we hear that um, more about this event. So write the lead, insert the actuality in there. And so notice she has attributed who's going to be speaking. Officer Williams saw a Chevy sedan. So she's mentioned his name. So we're kind of trained as an audience. Whenever we hear somebody's name, we're expecting them to do an actuality. So. Uh, uh, that's one rule for you guys. Do your lead just like you would in a reader, but then you've got to set up your actuality, which means you've got to say who is going to talk. And, uh, and so once you set that up, then this is how you write out what they say. So you know, your job is going to be to go through one of these stories. And so when you're looking for a story um, with, with a, for a rap, look for one with some quotes in it. So basically, what you're going to do is you're going to take a quote from a story and put it in there as your, as your actuality. What do you usually find in these people's Pardon me? What do you usually find in these people's 
you can keep that. They have boxes and all the and all the. I have I have like I took. I'm sorry to say I took about a bunch. If anyone wants <laughs> paper, this is. Uh, I've become. Uh, I hope I didn't stop anyone else from reading a guardsman when I took them last week. So. Grab a paper if you want. So I'm looking at the first page, Students College Family Lays Him to Rest. And uh, um, I see just scanning through the story down sort of middle, it says, here's a quote uh, from somebody named Katerina, who is uh, probably fully identified later on. Dana was a warrior. He fought to live, Katerina said at the funeral. He gave all that he could until he could give no more. He loved until he could love no more. Dana fought for his life, and today we honor that life. So that's a little bit too long to comfortably be a soundbite, but you could take part of that. You know? And so basically, when you're adapting this story for radio, you, know, you make sure that in your, in your lead, you have the who, what, where, when. You know, a city college student laid to rest. Uh, an emotional ceremony in whatever building it was on whatever day. Uh, and you said, uh, and, and then you say, you know, um, uh, um, uh, fellow students uh, uh, spoke about, you know, the beauty of his life or whatever. And then you, you, you know, uh, or let's say fellow student Katerina so-and-so uh, uh, remembered him in her speech. And then boom. You put in actuality, ACT, ACT, where would it be? ACT, Katerina. And then um, what she said. he gave all that he could until he could give no more. He loved until he could love no more, or something like that, basically. So don't take the whole quote. Take the most powerful part of it, basically. And then feel free to use that or any other one. This is kind of an exercise. Um, and then you come back out and you know you say uh, provide more detail or you know if um, you know the family plans to make a scholarship for him or something like that. that would be a great sort of next step type of item at the end or if there will be further recognition or on the other hand why was this story important you know uh, you know you could say you know CCSF continues to mourn the loss of one of one not the next story coming up in the newscast, but rather the next thing that might happen in this story. Oh. So in other words, let's say it's a story about uh, you know, uh, a hearing on, you know, uh, I don't know, some new city ordinance. You want to give the date for the next hearing. You know, uh, the end of Kavanaugh, it would be, you know, despite the raucous uh, confirmation hearings in, in Washington, it's expected that uh, Judge Kavanaugh will be, uh, you confirmed. know, confirmed on Friday, you know, because that's their, that's their timeline. <laughs> <laughs> it all doesn't really matter. That's the weird thing about it, isn't it? The most important things somehow don't seem to matter. Okay, so. So, so that is, that's your wrap. As you see, it's a little bit longer, mostly to accommodate a sound bite. And not just the words of the sound bite, but the extra, the extra thing that you have to write in order to uh, set up the sound bite. So you have to say, who is going to talk? Okay? So, so that, these features yeah. that you're showing us, they're, they're actually in, on Canvas, right? Uh, yeah, so they're not features. These are, these are uh, readers and wraps. Okay. And then there's something called a feature, which is going to be an assignment for later on. And that, that comes in at the end here. So you see a feature is much longer, longer. right? Okay. And this is an actual NPR script. So this is how NPR formats it, which is pretty much the way that we do. Uh, yeah. You know when to type in capitals, when type in little it should all be in capitals except for the actuality. So the words of the actuality, the quote, are in regular sentence case. Mm -hmm. That's all. So again, that's the, the NPR style. OK, so just to show you in the modules, so that's what we've been looking at. Radio news tutorial, reader, rap, feature, format, OK? And then the assignment up here, 
Um, so here it is, and let's just look it over, see if it's clear and all. So the assignment for next Tuesday, write two short radio news stories based on stories you find in local news media. One radio reader, 30 seconds, which would be read by the news anchor. One radio rap, 45 seconds, that contains a quote or an actuality wrapped inside a reporter's introduction and conclusion. So that's what I've been trying to say. That's how we would structure that. There are links to examples of radio script format for you to imitate below. So the link should lead out to the tutorial. Let's make sure it works and it does. Yeah, so that's what I've been looking at. So you'll find the link within the assignment as well, just to make life easier for you. OK, uh, it says here, follow the required formats. Your script should be in all caps, except for the quote which is in sentence case, which Chow just asked about. 12-point courier font. So they use courier. If you can't get courier out of your word processor, no big worry. But you know that's the classic. That's the, you know, the way they do it. One-inch margins. Identify your script professionally. So each one should have a slug at the top left of the script. So by slug, remember, I mean this three lines three lines that are never read on the air, but are just there to identify it. Right? So the title, you make up the title, your name, total runtime, 30 for a reader, 45 for a uh, map. Each script should have a slug, and there you go. How to do it. So find two news stories currently in print or on the web that you want to adapt. Use the Guardsman, use the Chronicle, use the New York Times if you like. Then extract the information from the print source, which will include the who, what, where, when, why, and how. Do this for both stories so that you've got just a list of facts that you need to work with. Note down the exact source of the two stories and attribute the information to its source in your script. So in other words, you're getting it out of the Guardsman or you're getting it out of the New York Times. Get the name of the reporter and the name of the publication at the minimum so you can say, you know, uh, Adam Liptak of the New York Times reports or tells us. Be sure to put that in. One of your stories will require a direct quote from a person interviewed. Which one is that? Is it the reader or the rap that has the rap. the rap? Exactly. Remember, the rap is a quote wrapped up in your stuff you write. Look at the story and find a quote that is enclosed in quotation marks, like the one I read here. But it just, you know. So this is what you're going to be extracting. Our goal is to raise salaries by 15%. Extract this quote. In other words, write it down or copy it or copy paste it. This is the exact thing you'll use as your actuality. So that's cool. And then you write around it. Uh, so that's all the necessary source material. Write the two scripts. The reader is 30 seconds long. It's read by the anchor. Uh, it should be six lines long. It could be a little more. It could be a touch less. The anchor should talk directly to the audience in a conversational tone. You must attribute the information in the story to its original source, which I asked you to make sure you have. You should have the newspaper with you when you do this, probably. So that will be the reader. OK, any questions? Or did I miss anything here? It's good enough. All right, next up for the wrap contains a quote. So that's where you use the actuality. The wrap should last 45 seconds, approximately 10 to 15 lines. Don't forget to attribute the source of your information as well. You must, do that. You must also write the anchor's introduction to the wrap. So we can look again at Carol's uh, work there. So this makes things a little more complicated. The anchor's introduction tells the audience what the story will be about in general terms and introduces the reporter. For example, you could, you know, an anchor's introduction would be like, more details on the Oakland Police Department scandal have emerged. KCSF Cecil Cecil has the latest. So that would be, you know, presenting you, and then you'll do your story. OK? And then there's this bit. I'm glad I'm reading this. At the end of the rap, the reporter says who they are. They call that a lockout. So this is Cecil Cecil for KCSF News. And that's, that's what you hear all the time, right? That's the classic. So to go back to Carol's rap, um, she writes, this is Carol Summers for KCSF. You can do that too. 
or you know, please don't say reporting live because you're not. <laughs> People like they want to say this is Cecil Cecil reporting live. You're not. You're not live. <laughs> you're, this is student assignment. Okay. Uh, let's look at how she handled the anchor's introduction. Okay. So. Three people were killed Saturday night when a car burst into flames after colliding with a taxi cab. KCSF's Carol Summer has the story. Okay, and then Carol, and it happened south of Market in the 9th and Brandon Streets around 920. So she's done a really good job actually at using the anchor. She's put some of the essential information into the anchor's introduction, and that lightens it up for her. Um, you can, you can play it either way, but typically what you want to do is, what I recommend for everyone, especially starting out, is write this story just the way you would write the reader, except incorporate a rap, and then write the thing that the anchor would say you know, in advance. This is typically, I mean, this, this kind of threw me on my first job. It was like I had done this seven minute long video about this thing that was going on, and then they called and said, OK, where, why didn't you submit what the anchor has to say? So it's actually to the freelance reporter, who usually is just hired for you know, 250 bucks to do a story or something. You also have to write what the anchor says. Because no one takes the time to actually listen to, watch, or read what you've written. So they expect you to know what's in there so that you can write an appropriate introduction. So this can be as kind of, you know, informationless as necessary as long as, as long as you introduce yourself and sort of say generally what the story is about. So for instance, on our students' college family lays him to rest, it could be as simple as sad news today coming out of City College, Malcolm Cecil has the story. It could be something like that. It could be as vague as that. Sad news coming out, or a sad event at City College, or City College students, you know, paid their last respects to a favorite student today. Uh, Cecil Cecil has the story, and then boom, and you go, and then you do your report. So the anchors thing is not complicated. Just don't forget to do it. That's all. And I throw that in because that'll always be part of your job. Okay, so. Coming back to the assignment, if you follow the instructions in the assignment prompt carefully, this should be pretty simple. So there's the link to the tutorial with the format for the wrap. And uh, once you're done, read it over, not just to time it out, but also does it read easily, freely, OK? Or uh, so that you don't stumble over any words. The sentences should be pretty straightforward. They should be short. Um, there's examples that uh, I won't dig back into of what we heard, but you can hear them sort of selling, saying, um, uh, you know, uh, um, the police telling us that there are three suspects on the loose, uh, telling us, you know. Uh, so there's kind of this present tense approach to it. You don't, you wouldn't, you don't have to say the police told us, or the police stated that. That's even worse, right? The police stated that. You know, who would say, you know, I'm telling you a story. I was there yesterday. The police stated that. No, you know, <laughs> the police were telling us yes, right? So try to try to do it conversationally, you know, and uh, and we all tend to write like our essays with very kind of complex language. Try to make it simple. So when you read it, at the end of having written it, if you still have any energy after you jump through all the hoops here for two short stories. You know, loosen up the language a little bit. You know, make it make it uh, informal because um, that's broadcast style. So uh, when you read it written in the Guardsman, it'll be too formal for us. So you know, simplify or make more conversational the language that's there. Okay. Um, and finally, there there are some other examples linked to. The, the, you know, earlier uh, from a couple of years ago or something, which are, you know, selected. So if we look here, probably, so there's a wrap and a reader linked up here. So let's just see. I mean, so make sure it still plays and such. Will it play? Uh, God. Everything automatically in iTunes. That's one app that I really hate. OK. 
Okay, go away, iTunes. So finder, downloads, open with good old QuickTime Player. Why not? Take and weather together on the 8th on All News 1069 and AM 740 KCBS. It's 922. Inmates charged with nonviolent crimes in Santa Clara County could soon be able to get out of jail without posting bail. KCBS's Mike Colgan has more on this get out of jail free card. That's One it. idea is to do away with monetary bail for those arrested for nonviolent crimes. You won't need money bail. You'll need There's to that. follow another set of procedures or programs in order to be allowed to leave jail without posting bail. Santa Clara County Supervisor Cindy Chavez says the present bail system is unfair. For the same crime, someone else could post bail or a same alleged crime. Some uh, One person can post bail and they get out because they have money. Another person can't afford the bail, so they stay in the jails. And the thing to remember is that we want our criminal justice system to be fair, effective, and cost-effective. Chavez says it costs the county and taxpayers up to $190 a night to house an inmate. The Silicon Valley Bureau, Mike Colgan, KCBS. Okay, so that was a classic rap, right? Did you notice something strange about the attribution in there? Cindy Chavez. Uh, I've heard it a few times. So Cindy Chavez talks before she's identified, but because the actuality is split into two, they can give her title in the middle of it. Let's, let's see it again. So we got we got the typical structure. First, we hear the anchor sets up the story. It's all about getting out of bail, you know, getting out of jail and not being able to post bail. Then over to the reporter. The reporter speaks. What's novel is that Cindy Chavez jumps in there without being introduced. We hear in the middle of that. So. Inmates charged with nonviolent crimes in Santa Clara County could soon be able to get out of jail without posting bail. KCBS's Mike Colgan has more on this get out of jail free card. One idea is to do away with monetary bail for those arrested for nonviolent crimes. You won't need money bail. You'll need to follow another set of procedures or programs in order to be allowed to leave jail without posting bail. Santa Clara County Supervisor Cindy Chavez says the present bail... There you go. You see, Cindy Chavez spoke, but she speaks well so well and she advances the story so effectively that, great, we'll use what she's got to say and then put the attribution in the middle of her two bites. And so that's, that's what was done here, which really makes a story flow well. That's a great example, better than anything I got this morning just by picking it up. So we play it through. There's the second actuality. It's unfair. For the same yeah. Question? There's something funny, because um, uh, like when they start, when they start the, uh, the, the original person who speaks. The anchor. Yeah, yeah, yeah says it's a uh, get out of jail free card. Uh huh. Uh huh. And then when Cindy Chavez talks about it, she sees it as a value. Yeah. Yeah. So the, it's like they're on opposing sides. That's really interesting. I don't know if they'd say. I don't know if they'd say the anchor is on a side. Moniker that the the get out of free thing. I, yeah, I think it's just a cute, like well, funny term. Her, yeah, I know. But I, her I, first I, sentence sounds a little opposed to it as well. I, I don't think, remember exactly what she said, but her first sentence as well sounds yeah. a like this. This sounds weird. The news media, the news media sometimes will uh, present present a point of view that they think is out there for their audience that they don't necessarily have someone to actually say. So, so in other words, the 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 idea of making the anchor bring up the get out of free jail, get out of jail free card, would be maybe a lot. Maybe some of our audience is actually thinking this. You know, maybe some of our audience is saying, "What criminals getting without bail, man? That's like getting a." Get out of jail free card, right? So, so they're acknowledging, they're kind of acknowledging the potential that that's what everyone's thinking. And then they got Cindy Chavez, who's presenting, you know, the, you know, the reason for why. The reason for, you know, which is it's, it's, it's pretty unfair to, you know, lock up people with, who have no hope of posting bail and not give them any other possibility, you know? I mean, you know, bail is designed to get you to, to be responsible and available for your trial. If they can find another way which is more fair than, you know, like most people having to stay in jail because they can't post bail or their family goes to these like bail bondsmen who like charge incredible interest and, you know, it'd be good, I think. 
Anyhow, so Cindy. Someone else could post bail or same alleged crime. Some uh, one person can post bail and they get out because they have money. Another person can't afford the bail, so they stay in the jails. And the thing to remember is that we want our criminal justice system to be fair, effective, and cost-effective. Sharvis says it costs the county and taxpayers up to $190 a night to house an inmate. The Silicon Valley Bureau, Mike Colgan, KCBS. So that was his lockout. Remember, you should do a lockout at the end, so it could be, you know, for KCSF, or in his case, it's the Silicon Valley Bureau, and then you give your name. Okay, so a classic rap, except that this, the actuality was split in two, and the attribution was done in the middle, which is, I think, good form. It's it's nice. It's when you can when you can do it like that. And they had really good actuality from the spokesperson. So the next one up is a reader, which yeah, again we won't expect to hear in actuality because it's just somebody reading. It was a little bit scary. A Japan Airlines plane lifting off for New York, making an emergency landing right where it came from, Tokyo's Haneda Airport, after flames were seen coming from the left engine. Uh, uh, 250 passengers and crew members aboard the plane, no injuries. The Boeing 777 uh, first thought to have been hit by a bird, but uh, the uh, transport ministry in Japan now says no birds had struck the aircraft. Uh, the video of this is rather dramatic. As the plane takes off, you see a oh, quick bad. burst of flame from the left engine of the twin engine. And jumbo, and then a moment later, a couple more quick bursts of flame. Uh, the plane did make a go around, dump some fuel, and uh, made a safe landing back at Haneda in Tokyo. Most of the passengers transferred to a different plane that did leave for New York. Okay, so that's a reader, um, and it was probably partially ad libbed. I expect they just had, without a word for word script, they had you know a list of talking points there. Um, there's another one in what I recorded this morning, which is pretty clearly that. So, you know, sometimes there's not enough manpower or it's early in the morning or whatever, and they don't have a completely written out script. And so they're, they're doing what's called rip and read. Has anyone heard of that? Rip and read, which was in, in the, in, you know, in the pre-digital era of news, broadcast news, they had these teletype machines and the wire services would, you know, uh, it was like a it was like a mechanical typewriter in a room, you know, and it would just it would have like rolls of paper and it would just like type out all these stories, and so so they'd just run in and rip it off and then run and get on air and read the script, you know, and it was written out in that way. So that's called rip and read, where your news organization basically exercises no oversight <laughs> over the content, just basically rips it and reads it, you know. But of course, it's written by the Associated Press or some of, another wire agency which uh, has responsible reporters doing a good job there and such. So um, there's still a certain rip and read access. And the reason why the classic format is all caps is because that's what those machines produced was all caps. So it's, um, it's just a throwback kind of. But nowadays, all of this is, you know, if, if you're a KCBS, um, you're uh, using, I mean, particularly if you're, I know for a fact in television, I'm not so sure about radio, uh, but there are, um, uh, you know, AP, the Associated Press, uh, partners with um, hardware, software manufacturers, integrated systems, basically, for your newsroom, where all the reporters are basically on a network, uh, collaborating on documents that are all stored sort of centrally like a mini cloud for you. And you could have an office in Sacramento and an office in the Bay Area, an office anywhere. And they're pretty, you know, it's, you know, you're on the phone with them. You're working on scripts together. Uh, they can enter items into the news rundown like this. They can, you know, that is a, a living document right up until the broadcast. So, and that will get pushed ultimately by uh, you know the the uh, the online producer will will you know say okay that's it and that's what gets fed to the announcers during the during the newscast uh, but it's all kind of like remotely done now and uh, AP has their service 
which integrates directly all the reporting that's done by AP. And of course, AP is, we'll talk next class maybe about the importance of wire services, but they're across the country, professional journalists. They're huge in print, obviously, but they also have a lot of broadcast uh, manpower. So they write the scripts that will sometimes get pushed out. They collect all the sound bites. So in this case, you know, uh, Steve Dorsey or Portnoy, they're in Washington. Uh, they, they file stories that are edited and completely structured, which will get available to all of the local CBS affiliates, you know, who will maybe pull down what they think is interesting to their, their news listeners. Uh, but also, AP will have reams of, of recordings, of sound bites. You know, the president in the you know, Rose Garden this morning, and there'll be like 15 different bites already selected. Uh, you know, itemized and stuff. So you can take their script, you can take the, their reporters already filing, or you can just go for the sound bites and you can use those bites in, in your own stuff. So it's a really kind of fluid production environment now with you know, collaboration all over the place. So anyhow, uh, these are, this is great. Good job. So <laughs> go, <laughs> I hope you're inspired to do a good job on this. And there's guardsmen here. Okay, so there's a lot of a lot of things to, to, to keep your eye on. So just we, we could do something else, but not uh, probably something more local, probably. Than the guardsmen? Yeah, than the guardsmen. Like like say if we like like we could do like the San Francisco Examiner. Absolutely, the Examiner Chronicle. Yep, for sure. Yeah, any news source that you want. Uh, two story ideas are next week, right? So let's focus on this one. Yeah. Two story ideas I think are on the 18th, but this is two, this is just practice using somebody else's reporting. Okay. Yeah.